Hello, and thanks for watching this video focused on the key differences between QuickBooks Enterprise Solutions and your Pro and Premier, or what I refer to as conventional QuickBooks. So just some of the surface stuff. First off, file size and cache. Obviously, Enterprise can handle a much larger data file, and you'll notice a dramatic speed increase when you're in multi-user mode and you're working in the file in QuickBooks Enterprise Solutions. For example, you know, Pro and Premier around 300 megabytes can get slow um, and definitely can see some types of data damage around 500 megabytes. Whereas in Enterprise, you know, you can be in a gig and people using it quite well and with alacrity. So that's something to consider. As well as how many users do you need in the file simultaneously? So depending on the SKU you purchase for Enterprise, Enterprise supports up to 30 users. Also, let's now look at security. So under the company menu, users, set up users and roles. So with Enterprise, there's actually a role list. You know, and I'll just go ahead and edit the AP and uh, role and show you exactly what's available versus the when you set up user security or try to restrict users from Pro and Premier. So here are all the different roles, and you can create your own role if you want or duplicate them, everything from purchasing and time tracking, view only. Pro and Premier does not have a view only user. That would be an enterprise. And then, of course, accountant, AP, AR, inventory, et cetera. But when I edit the AP, you'll see that there's about 11 or 12 different areas and activities, and I can even keep you know, somebody out of a particular bank account. As well, the activity access level is uh, more sophisticated than Pro Premier. You can do view, uh, yet not create, not modify, delete. There's some better examples of that. So accounting, centers. Let's just look at customers and receivables. For example, credit memos. So they could view them and create them, but not modify and delete, right, or print. So by transactions, uh, as well as lists, uh, you have the ability uh, to really break down the access level in such a way that your staff or your colleague you know can access the areas they need but not mistakenly go into other areas or things that they should not see so that's kind of the role list and you can create multiple roles and then add it to a user as well let's look at reporting so what if you need to combine company files into excel you know separate entities or separate quickbooks company files so Enterprise comes with QuickBooks Statement Runner to begin with, but also you can combine reports from multiple companies. And you just go ahead and browse out, add the files, and then you could look in Excel uh, for each company, a balance sheet, standard or summary, P&L, statement of cash flows, trial balance, profit and loss by class, and sales by customer, summary. So seven different reports that you could uh, view in Excel. And in Excel, each company file will have its own column, and then there'll be a total. Also, regarding reporting, um, Enterprise has uh, the ability to do, uh, you know, to integrate with open database connectivity. And it has a free ODBC readable driver. Uh, so when you open Excel or Access or Crystal Reports, you can pull in uh, the different fields uh, of data with an Enterprise and build your reports that way. And it has a live link back to the data. So that is another thing to consider with uh, enterprise solutions. Now, before we jump over to inventory, because I think enterprise really shines with the advanced modules and advanced functionality and capabilities, how to track inventory. If we go to the item list, and let's just create a new item, the group. Now in Pro and Premier, you can have 20 items per the group item. In enterprise, you can have 100. Also, for assemblies, you can have as many sub-assemblies as you want of a particular finished good or build assembly as well. The build assembly window itself is editable. So in Premiere, which also has the build assembly, if you want to change your existing or you want to just do a, a variable build, just adding a component on the fly, you have to go to the original bill of material and add it there. So this area here where I can choose a different item or swap it out, is not available within the Premier Build Assembly module, but with Enterprise, it is. Also with Enterprise, you can automatically build required sub-assemblies of a finished good. So notice for this DF2 assembly item, DF1 is an assembly of itself. I have no quantity on hand, but the DF1 item, its component parts, I have plenty of quantity. So if I were to put, if I were to uncheck this and even put, say, 
you know, one and tab off, it's going to say, hey, you got to make it pending. Then, I, then in the olden times, you have to, before Enterprise 14, I should say, and if, if you're using Premiere, you actually have to go and build DF1 in order to build DF2. However, if I go back and check the box to automatically build required subassemblies and just put in my one and tab off, it's going to allow me to build it. Because when I build DF2, the name of this particular assembly item, it's going to build all the subassemblies that roll up to this finished good. Now, another key difference, and again, this has to do with tracking inventory and particularly purchasing. If I go to reports and I go to inventory, and then let's look at the stock status by item report. Pretty important, and Premier has it as well. But at the enterprise level, I can actually create purchase orders in an automatic way based on the maximum and the minimum uh, that I have set for the item. And I can also use available quantity to, to reorder. This process will take into effect items that are already on purchase orders or they're on sales orders but have not yet actually been invoiced. Still show in inventory, right, because I haven't invoiced them. But this report will take into account that I might have items on other sales orders. So you can really track in a great way using enterprise solutions what you have available to promise your customers. And I'm going to hide zero quantity. I'm going to create auto purchase orders. And it, literally when I check off these here and create purchase orders, it'll automatically create the purchase orders in a batch. And now let's focus on a couple of advanced modules uh, with an enterprise. They are an add-on by cost only, and it just awakens dormant functionality or features. One was with an inventory, and the other's with an advanced pricing. You can actually do discounts and quantity discounts, price rules, things like that. So under the edit menu, preferences. Uh, and you go to items and inventory, advanced inventory settings. So I can track inventory across multiple locations, even subsites within the warehouse, you know, bin, shelves, and rows. You turn that on and there's an ability to transfer items from one location to another or from a row or a shelf or a bin to another. And you can run reports based on items at different locations, quantity on hand by site, stock status by site, and inventory valuation by site. Very important uh, and needed with manufacturing distribution and wholesale. As well as you can track a uh, lot or serial number, both on the, at the purchase and the sales part of the process. You could turn first in, first out inventory valuation method on, as QuickBooks natively does average cost. But you could do FIFO and, of course, track barcodes and scan both items coming in to receive as well as uh, going out on an invoice or sales receipt. So those are the advanced inventory settings and down in the sales customer preference you have the ability to turn on advanced pricing also an add-on just by cost where you can do discounts price rules etc now if i were to drill in to a particular item here and this will just be a non-inventory part i can actually set up a discount that when they buy two or more instead of the price being a hundred dollars it'll be ninety dollars right and you can set up different discounts there as well i have price rules so this is my May Day sale, uh, where up through 531, it's 15% off. So when I create a sale for that particular item, uh, I've set it for all non-inventory parts, but you could set the price rule, because there's an actually a price rule list under the list menu, price rule list. I could actually set this to inventory parts or particular parts or even a service item. This would be a, a discount that would be applied or a price change would be applied. Set the date range set the actual percent lower or above, et cetera, based on what you're doing. And then there's even, you can talk about price overrides as well. Now let's look at the inventory center real quick. Inventory, inventory center. Now Premier has one as well. I've had an inventory center since uh, 2012, but in the enterprise, um, I can drop in an image and attach an image to a particular inventory part. And uh, this is this center is for inventory parts and assemblies and a great launching pad to go to transactions or reports as well. If I drill into this RC01 item, just edit the item, and here is where you'll see, as I have the site info turned on, I want to track the minimum and maximum for these particular items. So at what site, by site, I can put in a, a minimum reorder point. So when it hits that, I'll have a reminder to order this particular part. And that's what the auto purchase order report pulls from too, and the maximum, so they don't over order or over purchase for a particular inventory part. And one final point, I, I love this as a value benefit of QuickBooks Enterprises. You're looking at my homepage, 
sure looks like QuickBooks Pro. So if you're someone who is using QuickBooks Pro and Premiere, the learning curve, trying to adapt or assimilate to enterprise, it's, it's literally the same core features. An invoice is an invoice. A bill is a bill. You're going to receive the payment. You're going to reconcile the bank in the same way. The registers look the same. A check looks the same, right? All that stuff you're used to doing, where reports are the same. But this added inventory functionality, the pricing flexibility, the user security and restriction sophistication, as well as reporting more headroom. These are the things where I feel enterprise really comes into play, uh, particularly as you're a growing business. So I hope this uh, tutorial has been helpful. Have a great day.